All right, this is a video on how to use the Silotech micro load frame um, in our lab. So this will be used for the smaller size specimens, sizes one and two, uh, of which we have a couple different uh, receiving fixtures here. We typically put these on the actuating shelf, uh, whereas the loading roller is on the fixed side. And we have the 72 millimeter gauge length or the 36 millimeter gauge length uh, fixture as well. And what you see here is we'll put in one screw that has some washers around it. That's to prevent um, any more lateral movement, uh, but we don't want to fix these in place like we would with these aluminum fixtures by nature of you know, the 3D printing cooling cycles and not being perfectly straight. So we make sure they're flush to each shelf um, and then we don't need to actually screw them in or anything. So we'll come over here to the computer and we'll open silo test. Uh, wait for it. Perfect. So here you can see the GUI for uh, the silo test uh, like uh, way we control it. So uh, we have a couple different tabs, specimen setup. Here you can zero your load or enable load or displacement limits. Uh, in mechanical setup, uh, in this particular page, all we're really concerned with is enabling or disabling the actuators. So when we click this, you can hear a slight hum from the, uh, from the machine. And now we can use uh, these switches to jog our fixture. Then under test profile, we can develop our actual uh, loading cycle. And we typically will only use the drive and ramp uh, options here. Uh, we had pretty bad, a pretty bad experience trying to use this for fatigue. So we pretty much use these for only quasi-static um, methods. Uh, so here you can adjust your distance um, we for compression will have a negative distance and the speed is always going to be like the absolute value. What's interesting here, uh, the units are interesting. So if we want to go three millimeters, we do negative three M. Uh, so we have the prefix of the millimeter. So we have millimeter. So we match like the prefix to the units uh, displayed, so millimeters. Um, correspondingly, uh, for like our compliance calibration test that we ran on here previously, uh, we'll use like four uh, micrometers, so four U, so micrometers per second. The sampling rate uh, determines like how much data you're taking per second. Um, you can set this to 40 or 60 or 20, I might set it to 40, um, just to be sure. And then the trigger corresponds to the photos that you're taking with the microscope. If you wanna take photos, then if you have this set as the same, uh, you'll take one photo every second, um, but it won't do anything. It, it's no harm if you have it set and you aren't taking photos. So we can add this segment to end. And then you can see your amplitude versus time here. Um, and this looks good. Then uh, we have the run test tab over here. This shows some graphic outputs, uh, but we can't run our tests until we set the file to path. Uh, but first what we have to do is actually put our specimen in it. Uh, so I didn't quite think this through. So you can do, take your specimen and then put it in the corresponding locations uh, for the rollers. And uh, you wanna make sure that the specimen is parallel to the ground and not sort of off angle. And then we can use this control, uh, this control here to step or jog the um, actuators in place. So 
that we can apply uh, sort of a resting load first because these fixtures aren't screwed in or anything and we have to hold the, the specimen in. So that's what I'm gonna do really fast. And then I will show you. So it looks all right. Okay, this is what we have here. So this is flush to the sides, right? And then if we look here on the top, it looks very even. So uh, the specimen isn't uh, like off angle or anything. And then we can see we're kind of close to the top of this loading point. Uh, and that's to allow us to take uh, microscope images if uh, if we need to during our load cycle. So because in order to get a good focus for the microscope, it has to be really close to the specimen. So we could even have this slightly higher so that there's not a lip here, but, um, but since we're not taking any photos, that's all right. But typically we'll have it higher up um, so that we can focus with the microscope. And then what I'll do um, on this top output here, we're primarily concerned with the load um, in our case. So I'll put a like a resistive load, say like 40 Newtons. I'll standardize this for all of the uh, compliance calibration tests. And then, um, so now we have our 40 Newton load. Our test profile looks good. You can zero this out if you want uh, because there's about, you know, a 15 to 20 Newton like noise or non-zero load output when it's actually zero. There's no load applied. Um, but I will typically just uh, calculate that out in the output file. So we can go to run test here, set the file to path. Um, so for example, uh, test, we can call it test three and we'll get three and we'll get a text file output hit okay all right now we can start the test so you see this eliminates for us start okay we can monitor the load you see the load is increasing so our sign was correct to apply a negative distance um, and we can see this is the load cell versus the time so we should see um, the load is increasing by magnitude as time increases and this should be you know pretty linear because it's a linear material. Um, and then, uh, then we just monitor the load until it gets to our desired load. Then we can hit stop test. The test has halted uh, and we should uh, have our, our file. And that's, that's pretty much it. It's very easy to set up these tests for the Silotech load frame. So um, yeah, to unload it, you can just hit this guy. Perfect, and uh, that's it.